Okay, I'm just going to go through some of these uh, questions, and not all of them, because some of them should be nice and easy, but just a couple of them are a little bit hard. Right, remember when you open it, you do get your formula page. Yeah, this is handy, because people forget your standard distribution, yeah, and people forget your spearman ranks, yeah. But also, remember, for your standard deviation and your mean, yeah, your calculator should be able to do it. So please look up how to use your calculator to get your standard deviation to get your means. Right, so this one here. Question nine. Uh, there are 64 tsunamis. Yeah, between the years 2000 and 2009. The table gives information about the maximum wave height and meters of these tsunamis. And I always like these questions because they're actually real questions. Anyway, work out a class interval that contains a median of these data. Okay. So the median is the middle score. Yeah, and it's gonna be one of these. Yeah. It might ask you to extrapolate the actual value. This one here is nice, it doesn't. So first thing we need to work out how many uh, people we are. So I need to add up my frequency column, okay, which is 26 plus eight plus six plus six plus five, plus eight, plus three, plus two, okay, which is 64. Now you've got to think, do I do 64 divided by two, or do I add one divided by two? Now because of the type of data is continuous, we don't add one, and it essentially comes down to the fact that it's an estimate. So I'm just gonna divide that by two. Okay, which actually gives me my 30 second score. So I'm looking for the one that has my 30 second. So all the ones between below 0 0.2 is 26. Uh, 26 plus 8 is 34. Oh, that's handy, I've already gone past 32. So it must be in this one here. So my answer is 0 0.2 H 0 0.5. Right, calculate an estimate for the mean wave height of the tsunamis. Give your answer to one decimal place. So we can use these columns, and I am going to use these columns, and, and show you working out. Because in a lot of these, you will not get any marks if you don't show your cat working out. So if you want to use your calculator, type in all the scores to check, that's fine. But you won't get any marks if you don't show your working out. So this one here, I'm actually going to put my um, midpoint. And this one here, I'm actually going to times my midpoint by my frequency. So let's just do my midpoint straight away. So this is 0 0.1. Then it's 0 0.35. 0 0.75. 0 0.2. So this one here is four, that one there is seven and a half. This one here is 20, that one there is 45. Okay. And then, uh, so it's your midpoint times frequency, so I've got to times all these together. So 26 times 0 0.1 is 2.6, 0 0.35 times eight is 2.8, 0 0.75 times six is 4.5, there's 12, there's 20, 60, 60 again, and then 90. Okay. Now I have to add all of these up, because if you, this is the same as adding up your scores, okay, which I worked out to be 251.9. I then have to divide it by the amount of scores there are. And what some people do, they just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and they divide by eight. Okay, If you choose to divide by eight, you're gonna get some stupid number, I would assume. You should get 31.4, yeah? Which means my mean would be there. So that's a big alarm bell. But don't do it like that, because it's wrong. We know there's 64, because we worked out in the previous question. Otherwise, you just add up your frequency again. Yep, so when I do 251.9 divided by 64, I get 3.9, or 3.9, Three five nine three seven five. Um, it says somewhere to one decimal place. This is one here. So my answer is three point nine. Okay. Now this one here. Right. The table shows the number of motorcycle in thousands registered each quarter from two thousand and five to two thousand and eight. Okay. Uh, the data is plotted in a time series graph above. The four point moving average, except for the last two, also plotted. Calculate the last two four point averages and plot them on the graph. So let's do the one there. So the last two would actually be from uh, quarter two, 2007 to quarter one, 2008. And the one before that would just be all of 2007. So I'm going to work out 2007 first. So I'm going to do 31 plus 8 plus 44.2 plus 41.8 plus 28.6, okay. Um, if I add them all up and then uh, divide it by two, I get 
36.6 and for my other one I'm going to have to do 44.2 plus 41.8 plus 28.6 plus 31.4 because it's uh, these scores here and divide that by 4 and I'll get 36.5 and I'll plot them on my graph it's going to be a little bit hard because uh, I'm using my laptop it's like that one and then that one okay Notice it says it doesn't say draw a trend line, it just says plot them. But there's nothing wrong if you want to draw a trend line. Because when you get to uh, this bit here, okay, you're asked to interpret the trend. And it just it just helps you out. Okay. Um, so if I put positive correlation, okay, um, I'd be wrong because it's not a scatter graph. Okay. What we like to use is the word rising. Okay, so I put rising trend. Yeah. You can put increasing. Now it says describe and interpret. Yeah, that's just describing, so I need to interpret it. So I'm going to say, uh, as the years pass, as the years pass, I'm going to say the, I'm going to run out of space, the more motorcycles are registered. And I've now written over question D. Don't ever do that in the exam because you won't get any marks for a question D. Right, so I made it a bit bigger, I've drawn my trend line. Okay, write down the quarter with the greatest number of motorcycles registered each year. Now I'm actually going to use my table for that. So if I look at year one, it's actually my greatest one's going to be two. If I look at year two, it's going to be two again. Year three, oh, it's going to be a quarter two, so the answer is just quarter two. Work out the mean seasonal variation of quarter two. Give your answer to the nearest whole number. Okay, so your mean seasonal variation, what I need to do is I need to read out what I predicted to be for each one to see the difference from my um, table. So I'm going to put 05, 06, 07. I'm going to put 08, even if I don't need it. So I'm actually going to put actual value. And here I'm actually going to put from the graph. I'm going to put difference because the difference is really my seasonal variation. So my actual value for my five is uh, 43.5 and then 41.4 and 44.2. I don't have anything for 08, but I'm leaving it there just in case I need to do a prediction, which I'll be honest with you, I probably will do. And for my graph, and you can have a little bit of leeway, I've got 33. Uh, for our 06 season 2 I've got 35 and for 2007 I've got 36 and of course you can have a little bit of a variation in your answers because I'm just reading off a graph now the difference 43.5 minus 33 10.5 41.4 minus 35 6.4, 44.2 minus 36, 8.2. Now, if I look at my actual graph, yeah, they're all below my actual my actual values. So all of these should be minus numbers. And it's just something for you to think about. Now I've just got to do the average of these numbers of uh, 10.5, uh, 6.4, and 8.2, divided by three. So I get minus 8.3 reoccurring as my seasonal trend. Okay. Now use your answer in part C to predict the number of motorcycles registered in quarter 2 of 2008. And it's nice because now I've got like my little graph here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read off the graph where I think it should be. So my 2008 just fits right here actually. If I read all the way across. I reckon that's 35, 36, 37. So I reckon this is actually going to be 37. Now I estimate my difference is going to be minus 8.3 reoccurring. So what I need to do now is I need to do 37 plus 8.3. And I reckon this one here should really be 45.3. So my answer here is 45.3. Uh, and remember it's in thousands, so you could put 453, sorry, 45,300. Here you go. Right, last one I'm going to do. Right, the table gives information about on your percentage increase in retail sale prices. The average mortgage rate percentage in the first week of 
July is for 11 years. Later on. Work out the Spearman's rank coefficient with these data. Uh, you may use blank columns to help you. Okay, And again, we've got to think about, I don't know anything about Spearman's rank actually, I've, I've forgotten what the formula is, you know. But I know I've got this formula page, and at the bottom you've got one that clearly says Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. So I'll use that one. Yeah, I'm just going to put it in the top right to see where we need it. And you have to just remember what all these numbers mean. Now, one that's going to take the most working out, and it's the sum of my different squares. Okay, and this is one that's not in there any need to think. So what I need to do is I need to rank my increase in retail prices and then rank my average mortgage. So I'm actually going to do this one here in blue. So it's going to be rank of, uh, let's call this retail. Now you can do a highest to lowest, or you can do the lowest to highest, it makes no difference whatsoever. Um, I'm going to do highest to lowest, and uh, it's actually quite nice because it already is ranked. So it's just going to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, uh, 11. Be careful if there's any that have got two numbers. Remember that they're like share the average rank. And uh, my average mortgage rate, I'm going to do in red, is actually going to be a rank of mortgage. That's a little bit hard to see. You might have to bear with me for a sec while I work these out. So my lowest is good. Okay, here's his uh, rank quickly because it was taking a bit too much time. Um, it's easy to make mistakes there, so I'll definitely make sure you write this in pencil. Now I need to find the difference of these. Now, it doesn't matter if I do 1 minus 3 or 3 minus 1, because my next stage I'm going to square it anyway. But let's do 1 minus 3, which is minus 2. 2 minus 7 is minus 5. Uh, 3 minus 2 is 1. 4 minus 6 is minus 1, 5 minus 10 is minus 5, 6 minus 9 is minus 3, 7 minus 11 is minus 4, uh, 8 minus 1 is 7, 9 minus 5 is 4, um, 10 minus 4 is 6, eight minus, 11 minus 8 is 3, and then we just square them, so it really doesn't matter if you mess up your minuses or not, so let's put my different squares, okay. uh, so that's 4, 25, 1, 4, 25, 9, 16, 49, 16, 36, and 9. Uh, be careful with that one there. For some reason, people always say 1 squared is 2, and it's not. Okay. Now, I've got all the information I need to print this formula. So it's 1 minus 6 times, and I need to add up all of my d squareds. Which happens to be 194. Okay. All of this, now n, is uh, the amount of numbers we have. Okay, and you can always look at the biggest number in your rank, which is going to be 11, or just count them up for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I've got 11, uh, which is 11 squared minus 1. Okay. Um, essentially, we can tie this all up or type it all into your calculator, but make sure you do write this little bit here. So end up doing 1 minus uh, 0 0.882, okay, which is 0 0.118. Okay, I'll work there for that. Okay, oh, we had a few more questions on this one, which is uh, interpret. Like, interpret what is the correlation of 0 0.118. Now, that is an extremely low uh, correlation. Yeah. So what I'd say is I'd say that there's little to no correlation between the uh, percentage of increase in the retail prices and the mortgage average. Yeah, and that's it. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. Here's the answers that I did earlier. Um, all of these can be found on a uh, Maths Genie, which is on statistics.